in today's video, I want to talk about women that hold out sex or conjugal rights in marriage. Let's talk about it. to the Most High Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Fearful episode. Today I'm back at an In Them Trenches handling that kingdom business. Man, biblically, we see that it is the man's responsibility to give his wife conjugal rights, access. Biblically, it is the woman's responsibility and both their duties to give conjugal access to their partner, a woman to her husband and a husband to his wife. What we see happen is women who are not virgins, who have defiled themselves prior to marriage through fornication and acts of sexual immorality, what happens is for all of the men that they have laid down with sexually, they have had low expectations. And they have given their body up for all kind of freakiness, all kind of uh, acts that are unprotected under the eyes of the Most High Yah. And a lot of these women, you know, I'm speaking to it, they use sex as a manipulation uh, tactic. And why do they use it as a manipulation tactic? They use sex as a manipulation tactic because prior to entering into a marriage, you know, there was no biblical guideline for how they were living their life in this boyfriend and girlfriend culture. So they could have these flings, not have to worry about submitting. You know, they could have these uh, sexual escapades without having to worry about being cooperative because the men on the other side was just fulfilling the lust of the flesh. But when you start holding a woman accountable to what she is supposed to be doing, a lot of their first response is to try to manipulate you with sex to get you to pull back from holding them accountable, okay? Uh, if you're calling a woman out for being disrespectful, for not being submissive, she's gonna pull back if she doesn't have accountability and she's gonna try to starve you out. And Women, I would encourage you, this often backfires on you. Often backfires on you. There's more and more female therapists out talking about this now than ever before, okay? And if you are not fulfilling your duty of marriage in the relationship, that is biblical grounds for that man to put you away. Because here's what happens. This man will be supporting you, you know, making sure you have what you need, making sure you're spiritually, mentally, and emotionally covered. And because he's trying to wash you with the word and to get you to the desired end state that he would have you, you fight back. And you use these sexual manipulation tactics to deny him access. Maybe seven nights out of the week, you got gas. Maybe. Uh, you know, seven nights out of week, you don't feel good, or you got a headache, or you're bloated. These are all kind of uh, sexual manipulation tactics. And you see oftentimes, see women can't do this same thing because when they go out and commit biblical adultery, by the way, meaning you are a married woman that belongs to the man and you are laying down with either a married man or a man that's not married. There's no cheating in the Bible. The word is adultery. There's no infidelity. The word is adultery. See, there's not a woman out there that can find a passage where the Most High Yah rebukes a married man for taking on a concubine or taking on another wife. If anything, we see Solomon, he got rebuked for the type of women that he chose. He chose women that was idolatrous. So here's what women here's what women have to deal with. 
you're going to potentially try to starve this man out sexually. And this man has an out. See, it's the most I y'all knew that a woman was going to work the way that she works. So the man is not guilty of adultery by laying down with another woman. Look at Abraham. Look at, uh, look at the pillars of the faith. You know, even Solomon, all the women he had never got rebuked. But you force these men, you starve them out because you don't want to comply. You know, with his boundaries, uh, you know, the rules, being submissive, being cooperative, you don't want to do it. And it's the way you rebel. And that man goes and finds somebody else, doesn't ask you, doesn't have to. Man doesn't have to ask, uh, to find another woman or to take another wife, as long as he's not laying down with another man's wife. That's the only stipulation for biblical adultery for a man. If that woman is single, willing and cooperative, he can go take her, but what do women do? They hold out on sex. And then when this man goes and finds somebody else that wants to fulfill that duty, these women say they've been cheated on and they have been, uh, they're the victim. And you know what? These men put you away and they go be happy with somebody else because of the behind the scenes manipulation. And I would tell you, see, when you're out defiling yourself with all this sex and fornication and sexual immorality, nobody's holding you to a standard. And the problem comes in when a man holds you to the standard in marriage that is righteous and you rebel against him. And that's the quickest way uh, a woman can uh, pretty much destroy her house, destroy her union of marriage, her relationship. Because a man does not have to suffer through that uh, when a man has biblical grounds according to Torah, according to law, to take another woman. And there's passages that say, if he take him another wife, if a man chooses to take another wife. And I'm telling you, like this, this cheating narrative, I'm against the word cheating because you throw a rock and hit 50 women and ask them what the word cheating is. Nobody has anything biblically concrete and they all gonna tell you they got a relationship with the most high. And not one of them will rely on the word or Torah to show where the transgression is. I tell you, man, women out here, if you're doing this, I want you to realize there's a time of the month where biblically you are unclean because of your menstrual. And a man is not supposed to be laying down with you. And here you are, a man doesn't have a cycle like that where he can constantly uh, put out if need be. But you already knowing that, okay, you have this menstrual that can last, you know, seven days, sometimes longer. And then the manipulation games on top of that, man, you're playing a dangerous game as a woman. You're playing a dangerous game. And a lot of women, they do that in their marriage only to go out and commit adultery. Man, there's a woman testifying on how uh, all this bad stuff started happening to her. And this is her testimony she steps outside of her marriage. Biblical adultery, you know, because she was a married woman. Not only was she getting into accidents and was paralyzed and all of this crazy stuff, she talks about denying that man's sex. And this man moves on and is happy, has built his house no longer in ignorance to what this woman was once doing. And she's saying, that okay I chose to do that and it brought forth certain spiritual consequences that she now has to live with I'm telling you women it is a dangerous game it is a dangerous game you are playing and at the end you might be able to get uh, the court of public opinion to side with you other women to side with you but the most high is not with you in this manner because he lets you know you are supposed to give conjugal rights to your husband. And a lot of these women have lived a life of harlots, been freaky and done all this. And when they get into marriage, 
what do they want to do? They want to withhold. And there's a price to pay for that. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking it gun barrel straight. Bow.